how many hours to drain a 10,400 gallon pool using a pump that runs at 20 gallons per minute. Okay, so obviously we have a pool like a swimming pool and it has 10,400 gallons in it and we want to drain it, we want to empty it and we have this particular pump that we're using that runs at 20 gallons per minute. But uh, I don't want to give you too many hints here uh, because I want you to have an opportunity to solve this. Now here's the deal. Um, I want you to uh, try this problem, okay? And when you do this, just get a piece of paper out and a pencil and try to justify your answer, okay? And if you think you're like, okay, well, if I do this divided by this and I do that, here's the answer. Well, that's not really good enough, okay? I want you to be able to justify your logic, model your work, and come up with the conclusion, whatever your conclusion might be, such that you, you know, you're going to present this to someone. You're going to prove that you figured out the answer. That's what math is about and showing your work in math, but I'm going to go through and cover some basic uh, steps that you should be taking when you're approaching any word problem. Of course, I'm going to solve this. Now, I'm not going to show you the solution just yet, but I am going to talk about uh, when you're dealing with math word problems, here is the general kind of steps you want to be taking because, you know, you're not going to be taking just one set of steps to solve um, word problems. Word problems, you, you know, I'm kind of giving you guidelines. That's the best we can do. And uh, this particular set of guidelines is just a quick um, abbreviation or summary of, of typical steps that we take with algebra type of word problems. And I'm going to be using a little bit of algebra to solve this particular word problem. But let's go ahead and look at the steps. So the first thing is you want to read the problem. Now, that seems pretty obvious. You're like, oh, okay, please tell me I didn't watch this video so you can tell me that I need to read the problem. Well, Listen, what I'm telling you is that you need to read and reread the problem, okay, multiple times. Do not just read the problem once, okay? You have to read it, extract information, read, read, read. And when you're reading the problem, okay, especially initially the first time, look for the question mark, okay? What is the question, all right? So there's a lot of information, but uh, oftentimes when students are not looking to, um, they're confused about what the actual question is. So when you're reading, um, uh, the problem, reread it until you're very clear on what the question is. Okay, so the second thing you want to do is make some sort of model, and this can come uh, in all kinds of di uh, different uh, varieties. So typical thing is like a, a drawing a sketch or, you know, uh, making a figure, any type of thing to kind of model the information uh, in the word problem, okay? So this is where your creative mind can come into play and you come up with something that you see as, okay, modeling uh, this information. Now, your model might be different than someone else's, but it could be perfectly fine, okay? But you do want to try to model uh, the information. Now, the third thing you want to do is, especially if you're um, we're using algebra, is we need to sign a, assign a variable, okay? So, you know, we're going to be using, like, variables at, like, x. So we might want to say, let, we're going to say, well, we're going to let x equals what? Well, when we assign a variable, typically you're going to let that variable equal the unknown, okay? Now, what is the unknown? Well, the unknown is typically the, the thing that we're trying to figure out, i.e. the question, okay? So that's kind of how you kind of figure out what your variable should be. Now, next, once you have a variable, you're going to kind of pull together all the information in the problem to construct or set up an equation, okay? And then lastly, you're going to go ahead and solve that equation, and then you're going to make sure that the answer to that equation is, in fact, the answer to the problem. Uh, sometimes it's not, okay? In other words, you might have to take one additional step to answer this uh, precise question in the problem, and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just one second. So this is the general steps to solve uh a word problem, especially in algebra. But let's go ahead and get into this solution. And uh, here is my model, and I'm going to show you my little setup. Again, um, uh, hopefully you had an opportunity to do this, but your work can look a little bit different than mine. And you could even come at this in a different way and get the right answer. But just remember, I want you to be able to justify uh, your steps, um, you know, back it up okay, with logic and, you know, sound mathematical structure, if you will. So somebody can read that and follow what you're doing okay, or read your work. All right. So, again, how many hours to drain a 10,400-gallon uh, pool using a pump that runs at 20 gallons uh, per minute? So there's a lot of information, okay? 
but what is the real, what is like being asked here? Okay, and if I look at this, I go to this word, how many? Okay, what, how many what? How many hours to drain? All right, so here is really the question, how many hours, okay, to drain this pool, right? So here I have a pool, it has that much uh, water in it, um, and I got this pump that can pump at this rate, okay? But I'm looking for how many hours, so I'm looking for time, okay? So uh, so one thing I'm noticing here that the question is, is asking me how many hours, but I know, uh, my information here is in minutes. So you'll see how this is going to uh, come into play in a second. But you know, I've read the problem. I feel like, okay, i got a pretty good sense of what's going on. Let me draw a little sketch here because this oftentimes uh, just helps us out and just mentally helps create a vision of what's going on, right, or an actual, you know, take it take things from words and see it kind of more in a physical sense. So here is our little pool. Here's my little pool. I have 10,000 gallons, 10,400 gallons, excuse me, in the pool. And here's my pump. And my pump can drain at 20 gallons per minute. Okay. So it can move that much water. And of course, I'm going to turn my pump on and drain this pull out. So what am I looking for? Okay. So I'm, I'm going to assign a variable now. So I'm going to use the variable X, but what should X represent? Okay. Well, I'm looking for what? What's my main question here? How many hours? But really, uh, this question in a more general sense is how much time, okay? Um, it's a time-related question. How much time? Well, it's asking me for hours, but I know my pump is running in terms of minutes. So I'm going to let X, I'm going to be like, okay, I'm going to let X equals the number of minutes to drain this pool, okay? I'm going to answer this question, but I'm going to let X equal the number of minutes uh, uh, it's going to take to drain this pool with a 20 gallon per minute pump. Okay. Now the reason why I'm, I'm using minutes is because my uh, pump is uh, being measured in minutes. So I'm going to figure out how many minutes first to drain this pool, and then I'm going to circle around and convert that into hours. Okay. All right. So uh, now that I got a variable, I'm going to set up a, a lovely equation. Okay, now this type of equation happens to be a proportion. So I'm going to show you how uh, we set up a proportion. So first of all, let's talk about 20 gallons per minute. Okay, now you could have, I could have been uh, pretty mean about it and I could have just given you this 20 gallons per minute. I could have wrote it this way, 20 GPMs. Okay, well 20 gallons per minute uh, you can write it this way, 20 gallons per minute. But really, the way you want to write it is this way. Okay, when we're setting up this problem, this is this pump can pump out 20 gallons per one minute. All right, so this and this means 20 gallons per. This line right here is per. You can use the word p like this right here per, or this little slash per one minute. So for every minute, this pump. Uh, removes 20 gallons of whatever, okay? So 20 gallons per one minute, this is a fraction, okay? But it actually is what we call a rate because we are working with different units of, different units of measure. So we're, we're talking about gallons, so we're comparing gallons and minutes, so we would call this a rate. So oftentimes, too, I could say, oh, the rate of this pump, okay, is 20 gallons per minute. All right, so now when I look at this, I said, okay, I got a nice fraction here where the numerator is in gallons and the denominator is in minutes. So what I want to do is equate the other information in the problem. Okay, so what else has gallons? Well, the pool has gallons, right? So the pool has 10,400 gallons. Now notice I have gallons in the numerator, so I have to put gallons in the numerator over here in this fraction over X amount of minutes. So I know that if I had a 20 gallon pool, it would take me one minute to drain, okay? So think of it, this pump this way. Think of uh, the problem this way. Here's this pump. It's basically telling me, listen, if you had a 20 gallon pool, it would take you one minute. I don't have a 20 gallon pool. I have a 10,400 gallon pool. How many minutes is this gonna take? So this is the setup of what we call a uh, proportion, okay? Two equal fractions and the big thing with setting up a proportion is that you have to make sure that the units of measure are in the same respective location in these fractions. So I eat gallons in the numerator and minutes in the denominator. Okay. Now, how do we solve a proportion? 
So if you're not familiar with proportion, I'm going to suggest that you check out some other of my YouTube videos on proportions, or maybe just sign up for my algebra, one of my algebra courses. But the way you saw uh, the way you solve a proportion is you use the cross product. Okay, we're going to multiply crosswise. So in this case, it's going to be x times. We're going to just uh, forget about the units of measure right now. We're just going to deal with the numbers. So we're going to go x times 20. That's going to be 20x, and then 1 times 10,400 is 10,400. Now, uh, once we have this cross product, we've created a nice basic algebraic equation for ourselves. So we have 20x is equal to 10,400. So how do I solve for x? Well, again, we're just applying basic algebra. I'm, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 20. So this is 10,400 divided by 20. So x is equal to 520. Okay. Now, if you were just, you know, moving very quickly and you say, oh, look at teacher, I got the answer. The answer is 520, but 520 what? Well, remember, x equals uh, the, um, the amount of time in minutes it takes to drain this pool. So it takes 520 minutes to drain this pool. But the question is asking what? how many hours okay so now we're going to have to uh, take a look at our answer from our equation and make sure we're answering the question from the problem so the next uh, question is how many hours is 520 minutes now most of you out there be like okay to go from minutes if i have 120 minutes you're going to be like oh that's just two hours because we're just going to divide that by 60 and i would get two or two hours you would be right Okay, so, but uh, you're going to take your 520 minutes divided by 60, and you would get 8.66 hours. So if you got that right, fantastic, excellent. Uh, and by the way, too, it's not about just you getting this right. Okay, can was your work um, logical? Okay, is it clear? Are you justifying your steps, or you, did you just do a bunch of calculations without you know telling the story of how you reached this conclusion? That's what math is about. But in fact, if you did all of that, I must go ahead and give you a nice 1984. That was a good year. Uh, flat top haircut and an A plus and 100%. Nice job. Okay. However, let's talk a little bit more about this conversion, right? So, how many hours is 520 minutes? Now we know. Most of us out there intuitively are like, oh, just divide it by 60. But why is that? Okay, well, that's worth uh, worth looking into real quick. So 520 minutes is the same thing as 520 minutes divided by 1. If I take 520 minutes and divide it by 1, I get 520 minutes. So anytime you want to express something as a fraction, just put it over 1. Now, uh, I'm doing this for a purpose because... When we're uh, going from units of measure, one unit of measure, okay, so we have some unit of measure and we want to convert to another unit of measure, what we need to do is multiply by a, what we call a conversion factor, okay? So we know, um, all of us out there, oh, okay, uh, um, in hours, there's 60 minutes in one hour, but we need to express this mathematically. So we're going to multiply by this conversion factor, uh, one hour has 60 minutes, okay, one hour per 60 minutes, or 60 minutes, or 60 minutes per one hour, okay, so this is the same, one hour, uh, we can write it this way, or we could write it this way, okay, they're equivalent, right, these fractions are equivalent, but why am I writing it this way, well, I'm writing one hour per 60 minutes, because what I want is the minutes to cross cancel, okay, so here I have minutes in my numerator, and minutes in my denominator, right? Now, when I multiply these fractions, the minutes cross cancel, minutes over minutes, they cross cancel, and I'm left with hours. So that's why we're really technically taking 520 over 1 times 1 over 60. And when I do that, okay, remember when we multiply fractions, you multiply the respective num numerators and denominators, we're going to get 520 times 1, which is 520, 1 times 60, which is 60, but we're left with this one unit of measure, hours. So 520 divided by 60 is how we get our uh, conversion from minutes to hours. So um, I just didn't want to quickly, you know, uh, go through this without really fully explaining uh, this part of the problem as well. But uh, again, if you got all this right, then you are a math superstar for today. Matter of fact, I'm going to throw in a few extra stars so you feel extra special today 
but a nice job. Okay, so here's the deal. How um, how do you get good at uh, word problems, math word problems? There's only one way, okay, and that is practice. Okay, you got to practice, practice, practice. Okay, just don't do one or two of these things and be like, okay, I know everything else because word problems are going to be different. But the more word problems you do, uh, here's the deal. Uh, successfully is that you're going to encounter where problems of similar type, similar flavors. You're going to recognize patterns and whatnot. You know, when you're taking tests, your teacher is not going to throw uh, crazy word problems out there. Now, you're going to have more challenging word problems on things like the SAT or ACT test if you're going to be taking those things. But again, uh, if you uh, practice doing word problems, you're going to get better at word problems. So there's no need to be afraid of these things. What you do have to do is to learn the basic process as I kind of described it, and then just practice this stuff. Okay. So hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that is the case, uh, please consider helping me out by smashing that like button. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.